But uh, Alex Brundle, while we have you here, I want to get your thoughts on uh, what, do you, what do you make of the F2 and F3 seats remaining? I mean, uh, we've still got some uh, MP, Carlin, ART, high tech, some big, big seats still left there. Uh, what, do, what are your thoughts on uh, on what's left out there and, and, and what we've had so far? No, it's a, it's a really it's a really interesting standpoint actually where we sit at the moment in, in F two and F three. I'll I'll let your audience go through the drivers in the seats as they're taken. They're all covered by yeah. um, they're all covered by the, the championships. But I think it most fun is to sort of speculate about which drivers may fall into the the open seats. So we've got a we've got an open seat at Trident uh, next to Clement Novelak. Potentially, this is all in Formula Two, of course. Uh, yeah. Next to Clement Novelak, potentially Roman Stanek uh, tested there, may end up slipping into that seat. One which is confusing me is, is high tech. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we know Isaac Hadjar had had a run there at the end of last season. I do wonder if they're waiting for a couple of Red Bull drivers because, um, mm. you know, we we do know that Red Bull tend to like to sort of splat their announcements all at once uh, occasionally yeah. uh, so i do wonder if we will see a, a duo there i can only think you know it's going to be victor martins at art uh moving forward uh in uh in one of the cars and then we we remain to see what teo paul share will do and that's that's going to interest me as well it's an interesting strategic moment for teo paul share he's obviously come second in the series last year does he go again or does he does he risk a worse performance in a further series of Formula Two. That's a that's a really difficult call for him. Or does he just head off uh, potentially into the world of you know attempting to be uh, Formula One reserve? Um, the seat at Carlin next to to Enzo Fittipaldi. My gut says Zane Maloney um, may end up dropping into that one. The one which is confusing me completely is basically Felipe Drogovic's seat at, at MP or, or the one which would be next to yeah. Dennis Hauger because I, I it's a great seat. It's a fantastic seat to have. And I can only believe that there's a bidding war going on basically over that over that seat or a, or a, or a talent and bidding war um, mm-hmm. in order to try to one, one would hope in order to try to um, to try to take that seat uh, next to Dennis Hauger. I think Hauger though has actually nailed positioning there mm-hmm. um, and taking all of that benefit. So an interesting time in the formula two marketplace. It really is. Uh, Tyler, before we wrap up then, of course, you are the man that covers F2 for us. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on that one? Any ones that really jump off the page for you? I mean, I think Alex has summed it up. I feel like my job's done here. Um, <laughs> and the, to be honest, the, the interesting points you mentioned about, I mean, as, as Alex said about the people that we haven't seen be announced yet and, and the slots that are still available. I mean, we made predictions on this and Pretty much all the predictions that Alex made are the ones that we've put in as well. Wow. Roman Stanley. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. I promise I didn't just read and plagiarize your report. <laughs> yes, Stanek, Stanek to Trident. I mean, that perfectly fits. Obviously, someone who has made serious, uh, you know, gains over the last three years in F3. Someone who was really young when he stepped into F3 and and has managed to have a championship contending season with Trident. You'd expect that to go to F2. A high tech um, Hajar is pretty much expected at this point. With you mentioned a Red Bull driver, you know, to be partnered alongside him at high tech. Our expectation was Jack Crawford was going to be that guy, another guy who was, let's say, in the running for the title last year, mm. not always there, but you know, was certainly at, at the front of the field. And then you look at, at Carlin, Zane Maloney, you know, was literally in F2 in the last round in Abu Dhabi. It, you know, was with uh, Carlin in um, British F4 when he won the championship. That fits. Um, and then you'd expect at this point that Teo Porsche is going to stay on the basis that you feel that so a driver of his calibre with the following that he had, you know, the youngest winner in F2 history, you'd think that he would have announced by now what he would do if he was going to be moving. So you'd think that in that case, the expectation is that he will be remaining at, at ART. Um, and then for MP, yeah, the, the expectation is at this point, with Derivola or Derivar, sorry, going to Formula E, which was a massive shock to myself. And then a uh, one driver who I, I always had a, an eye on was Kyle Collette from F3, because he was with um Alpine mm. and obviously an F3 driver with MP Motorsport as well. But he he looked to be stepping aside and moving to endurance, I believe it was. And therefore it did leave this, you know, you've got a championship winning car who, you know, in the hands of a, a really good driver, 
you know, could be threatening someone like Halga, who might be top three in terms of predictions for the, for the season. So that's really the case of of will it be a driver from F3 who no one expects with a, a heap of money having the opportunity to come forward. Um, in that case, it looks like Dennis Halga does have a a team and a car all to himself to to compete for the title. So, but I think wow. the thing is to touch on that um, just quickly for the drivers that we've we've talked about over the last few weeks is that. I think there's a massive transition from last year to next year. We've seen Armstrong, Vips, Daruvala, a lot of the older guard move on. We've now got a younger generation like of Behrman, Hajar, Martans, guys who are really already threats to those older guys in F2. Um, and I think the fact that they've almost got the series to themselves now means that we could have sort of a 2018 F2 season on the cards if you consider the amount of F1 affiliated rookies there are. Uh, so I think that's the, the pressure of academies is certainly going to be, I think, the, the face of F2 for next year. Yeah. I certainly feel that those names are are, are going to be are not going to be names that we look in a, in five or six years back on and go, do you remember him? He did a season of F2 one. They're going to be names that we see in mm. either the midfield, what I like to call the midfield IndyCar factory, the, the, yeah. the, the, the uh, F2 has become or indeed moving forward into 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 F1 in some sphere. I do feel that that crop is a very good crop. Um, so I'm very much, as, as you are, excited uh, by next season. I do wonder if MP, and I've seen it happen so much in the past, a team has a breakthrough season, gets themselves to, you know, the lead of the championship or winning the championship, then hold out for so long for this mythical, funded, super fast driver that actually they don't end up getting the driver the next season. And I wonder if that is what they're falling into now a little bit with their final Formula 2 seat. Very, very interesting. Uh, leave, your, leave your opinions in the comments below.